Notre Dame will host Cincinnati on Saturday. With that win, Brian Kelly became the winningest head coach in Notre Dame history with win number 106, breaking the previous record held by Newt Rockney, the Hall of Famer. Brian Kelly joining us on the program. How did you celebrate that victory, Coach? Um, bumper to bumper traffic getting out of Chicago <laughs> uh, on our bus. Uh, you know, it, uh, and uh, deep dish pizza from Chicago uh, on the bus. So it was kind of neat because it took me back to my roots as a Division II head coach, bus rides. You know, it's like AAA baseball. Uh, we took the bus back from Chicago to South Bend and got a chance to be on the bus with the guys. So uh, it was real. It felt great uh, to be able to celebrate it on a bus ride back to South Bend with uh, with your teammates and uh, your coaches. Did How many times have you gone into a game not thinking you could win that game? Whew, not many. Uh, you know, I've coached you know, well over 300 games. And I can't remember many that I've gone in and said, we have no chance of winning this game. Um, maybe I could probably count them on, on my hand uh, where, where I felt like it was that overwhelming uh, odds against our football team. And, and now, truth be told, uh, there were probably way more many games than that. It's just I'm just not wired that way. I just go in thinking that uh, we're going to find a way to win. But at Notre Dame, have you felt like that? If it was a playoff game, did you think, oh, my God, I, I don't I don't like our – even though you want to win, you you coach to win, but is there in back of your mind you're like, I, I hope this doesn't get out of hand? Um, maybe in 2012, the Alabama-Notre uh, Dame national championship game, I knew we were in a – you know, an uphill climb there. We were only three years in, in, into rebuilding the program here. And, you know, we got there quickly uh, with with uh, playing for a championship. And, you know, that Alabama team was obviously one of the best in, in a long, long time. That, that a lot of things would have had to gone right there. So that was probably the one time when I was at Notre Dame where I felt like this is going to be an uphill climb. And it's almost like you guys were ahead of schedule. And you got to that national title game because, you know, people talk about, OK, can Notre Dame, you know, have the speed, you know, can they can they match the offensive and defensive lines of SEC teams? And and how do you establish how do you go out and try to establish that at Notre Dame? Well, we still have to recruit to our profile. And so it's player development. Uh, it's it's the ability to um, recruit to Notre Dame at a higher level than we had been recruiting up to that point and then developing your players over a long period of time. And, you know, the last two drafts, we've had 10 players drafted. That's as high as Alabama and Ohio state. And, and, and that's where we need to be to have the kind of players necessary to compete uh, at that, that, that stage. So it, it wasn't three years into it that we were having that kind of depth in drafts. And so um, we knew that we were there early, like you said, and it just requires, more time in recruiting, uh, and you got to win, right? We couldn't just celebrate our past success. Uh, we had to win, and and that attracts, obviously, the, the, the kids to come to Notre Dame as well. How long do you plan on coaching? You know, I've never said this is the day that I'm going to stop coaching because I love the relationships. I love 18 to 21-year-old players that – uh, are growing every day, making mistakes, learning from them. Um, that's what that's what's exciting. Everybody was asking me about the Wisconsin win and breaking Rockies record, and I I totally understand that because it's such a milestone. But I was I was so excited about some of our younger players and and how they grew in that game, and that's the honest truth. So that's what keeps me going. And and if I'm if they're still listening to me, Dan, and and I'm still excited. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll keep coaching for as long as they keep listening. How do you keep up with younger kids, like 18 year old? How do you relate to an 18 year old? I think you have to stay close to them. Uh, and, and you can't be locked up in meeting rooms. You've got to be in the training room with them. You've got to be in the players lounge in the locker room, but you're not you've doing TikTok dances or anything like that. Are you? No, I don't think you have to, but you better know 
TikTok, uh, and you better know current trends. And, uh, you know, I've got some college age uh, kids myself. And uh, I said this the other day in a press conference, when, when I hear, you know, some urban slang, I'll immediately text my, my college age kids and ask them what that means, uh, just so I can stay current on what's going on. What coach did you take the most from, try to emulate? Uh, you know, Dan, I, I've been asked this question a lot. I, I don't know that I emulated anybody as much as, you know, there were so many mentors in my life growing up because I was a head coach at 28 years old. And I was so focused on trying to figure out, you know, who I was and what I was doing um, that I just, I would listen to anybody, anybody that I respected, whether you were coach or not, a parent, um, uh, somebody in our office, uh, anybody that I had respect for, I was listening to them and trying to build my own identity and philosophy as a young coach. Uh, how important was it to uh, schedule a game with Cincinnati? Well, I don't know that there was an importance. I, 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 I felt like, you know, when we were talking about scheduling future opponents, I'm like, why don't we get Central Michigan where I coached and we won a championship and let's get Cincinnati and, um, and get them on the schedule as well. Um, just because I, I just felt like a, a, a sense of, you know, thank you for the opportunity that I, that I got to coach there. Um, I'm not as excited about that decision in playing <laughs> Cincinnati now, but, um, you know, it's a great program and, and Luke's done a great job there. And, um, you know, it, it's, it turns out now it's going to be a great matchup. Were you a Patriot fan growing up? I am. Yeah. And I still am. Uh, do you uh, have any conversations with Belichick? I do. Yeah. Yeah. How we often? stayed close. Yeah. We've stayed close over the years. How often do you talk to him? Probably every, every couple of months. And you're talking, you're, you're acting like Belichick now. You're not answering, you know, it's not a long winded <laughs> question here, Brian. Like, it, well, it, we'll what, talk about games, you know, uh, you know, he'll text me about how we played and I'll, I'll text him back and, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's football related stuff, certainly, um, about how we're doing and, and, uh, we work a lot together with our foundations as well. And that's really what's gotten us close. Um, my wife and, and, uh, his fiance are really close in terms of working their foundations together. So, uh, that's how that relationship formed and uh we've stayed in contact because of that but when notre dame plays navy is he rooting for navy <laughs> he's got a deep relationship with navy there's no doubt there you know it goes back with his dad and where he was from and um i think he stays out of the the rooting business he's much more into um how games are played uh tactically and uh you know, and I think you you guys see that from your perspective, too. He, he doesn't get too emotional about who he's pulling for as much as how the game's played. I think he ends up at Navy when he's done with the NFL for some reason. I hope not, because we play him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would not be uh, – that would be one reason for us not to play Navy. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Notre Dame is taking Navy off its schedule. Yeah, um, no doubt. And, and you're going to Vegas next year. We are. We're really excited about that. And I, I know, you know, our Shamrock series, which travels around the country and plays in, you know, great venues, this venue, Allegiant Stadium and playing in Vegas, um, you know, we're playing BYU. It's 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 going to be a great uh, environment. We're really looking forward to it. Great to talk to you and uh, good luck against Cincinnati and congratulations. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me on. That's uh, Brian Kelly, Notre Dame head coach, the uh, winningest coach in Notre Dame history.